Hey, what's up everybody? Thanks for clicking on the video. This is David Pendleton and now I'm covering the pro division of the Hot Springs Tournament. This is of course going to be the qualifying walkthrough. So uh, I found pro actually a little bit easier to play than I did rookie, which is a little bit weird, uh, but maybe I'm just in a good bracket here. I'm not sure, but people are really struggling today on pro. So, you know, if you're able to just knock out your round and qualify today, I think that's going to give you a leg up because a lot of people will start to look at content. They're going to start to get shots dialed in on Tuesday and Wednesday. So today is definitely the easiest day to get yourself sneaked in. But again, you know, this is a look at a tier three bracket. Um, you know, I'm minus 14 on this account. I think I was minus 13 on my other pro account. Um, and both of them are sitting at the top of the standings. So I believe that's what it was. I'm not 100% sure on my main pro account, but uh, either way. You see here, I think people are struggling today. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Let's go ahead and get this party started on hole number one. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget the thumbs up. This is a really, really nice wind angle uh, for pro division here. The only thing that would make it a little sweeter would be a little bit more tailwind, but that's okay. All right, we're gonna go five top, two bars, a side spin to the left. Five top, two bars, a side spin to the left. Here, you're gonna notice that I'm setting up with a little bit of my orange ring in the rough, but most of it in the fairway, just like that, okay? Going with a little bit of overpower and then a half a ball of curl to the left as well. We use the half a ball of curl to the left just to make sure that we get this ball centered up on the fairway. And then shot number two is going to be performed with our Grizzly. Now, the thing here about shot number two on this hole is there's always a nice funnel. We do play it uphill minus 10% at the minimum. Now, when it comes to this shot, uh, you're going to have to use a little bit of backspin, okay? The backspin is primarily going to be determined by how far you actually get on your drive. Some players might use just a little bitty, you know, click of backspin, uh, if you get a lot of draw, a lot of yards on your drive like I did, you're going to see here we're going to be using more backspin. But the key is just to find a good consistent landing area. Typically, we try to look for minimum distance of our Grizzly. But here I got a little bit more yards by using a little bit more overpower than I normally do. But still, all we have to do is make sure that that ball guideline is nice and flattened out. And again, the minus 10% pull, use your backspin, get the ball guideline going to the cup. And you see here with the perfect ball, this shot is dropping very nicely, playing really consistently too, as I did drop this on both of my accounts. Here we got the super zoom in, and it's in there for the eagle. That'll take us on here to hole number two. Hole number two, we're going to play 15% at max. 15% at max. This shot was sent to me by a few of my subscribers. This is something that Ben Kennedy posted earlier on his channel today. So if it's not broke, don't fix it. This is obviously a good shot. That's why we're using it here. But I always want to give credit to the person who put it out there first, and that is him. Three bars a side spin to the right combined with 2.8 back. Now, the thing that we're going to be looking for here is to make sure that we have our yellow ring in the rough just like this. And you'll notice that I have the ball guideline going through the back of the pin, and this is after the spins. Now we go to make our adjustment. And for me, you know, I didn't make this on either account. So I think it needs a little bit of tweaking in order to get this ball into the hole consistently. But it's a good shot. It's very close. And again, very, very minor tweaks. And I think we're going to be good to go. You see here, we catch a nice part of the rough. And I just barely left this one on the left hand of the cup both times. So on this account here, uh, let's take a look at it because this was my closest one. Um, they were both almost identical shots. But you're going to see here, I am centered up on the pin. I think we need a slight offset on this hole. Uh, if I were doing it again, if I had another chance, I would put the ball guideline with the same spins through the hole and everything. Except I would put my ball guideline in the right-hand side of the cup. So aim right-hand side of the flag stick in the cup, and I think we should be good. Now, I had 6.4 and 6.2 mile per hour wind. That's probably why, you know, both of my balls went in the same area uh, like it did here. So maybe just, like I said, a little minor tweak, and you might be able to start off at a minus four through the first two holes. 
Hole number three is tough. You know, I shot a minus 14, as you saw, which was my best score. And I even picked up a birdie on this par five. So it could have been better. Here, we're going to be going with as much top spin as you have. And you'll notice the drive here is about half a ball of curl to the left as well. I don't really go with overpower on this shot. Worst case scenario is if you use too much OP, you clip this rough instead of hitting the fairway, and then you're just dead in the water on this hole. You'll definitely be picking up a birdie. So here, we're just trying to get as much distance as possible. Use your most powerful club that provides the most top spin as well. Um, so that's how I play that hole. Now 10% max, and then push back up to max is how I play this one. Now I do understand that the push back up to max and everything is a little bit more risky on this hole, especially since we're gonna be going with full blast OP, but I think it gives us the best way to try to pick up the eagle, which you're gonna see here. So I make my adjustment, okay? I go 10% at max. I do pull over the bullseye just to avoid a little bit of a less distorted ring pull. And you'll see here, we're going bombs away. I even hit a really nasty, great shot to the left. And it was nice because it still works out. So good amount of fairway to work with here. A great right would probably put you into the rough for sure. Uh, but perfect and great lefts look to be okay. Now you can see here this leaves us for a chip-in shot uh, to try to save our eagle on this hole. For me, unfortunately, I missed it. You know, I try to gauge here where I'm at with my Embringer. I figure it's about 50%. So I play it at mid. You know, I mean, I could be wrong, but it's really close. And then the ball guideline was a little bit weird too. So you saw here that I put on a little bit of backspin to get my ball guideline bouncing into the cup because without the backspin, it was actually kind of getting a little wonky on me. It was there, then went away, there, then went away. So a little glitchy. But you'll see here, I pulled it 20% at mid and I just didn't pull it enough, I guess. You know, very, very close, just a couple decimals off. So there is your look at hole number three. That'll take us to hole number four, 20% elevation at minimum distance of our club. So here's what's gonna be important on this hole is that you have your grizzly in your bag, okay? Because that's how you're gonna find minimum distance of your sniper with a power two ball. Now, if we take a look at the wind here, very low wind, 5.8 miles per hour. I was about one mile per hour more than that on my other account. So. What you can do is if you start with a katana and you get low wind, that's great. We'll keep it the same. But what you can do is you can always start with a katana, okay? And we're going to play at 20% at minimum. What you would do then is you would find uh, where we want to aim here. So at complete minimum distance, you can see I'm putting my red ring right there on the sand line just like that. And then we can apply our spin, which is going to be about 4.8 back and about two point, what would you call that? 2.6, 2.7 to the right. If you have a higher wind at this point, you could just switch out to a kingmaker, okay? Because the game is gonna put the ball exactly where you're at. Your shot and everything will stay the same. You're gonna pull the same 20% at minimum, but you would use power two ball settings and numbers. That's one little trick um, to set up a shot if you get hit with high wind. But here, like I said, 5.8 is reasonable. And I'm not saying that this is going to be a consistent hole in one because it's definitely not. Uh, this is a tough hole to pick up a hole in one on. But, you know, it's there as you're going to see right here. And it just barely catches the bottom of the cup there and goes in for the hole in one. So, you know, so far we picked up a drop on hole one, picked up a drop on hole four. We also drop hole number five and hole number eight uh, during this video. So please give it a thumbs up if you think I did a good job. Now for me on this hole, you know, a lot of people are going to say, why not take the sniper rough bump? Uh, I don't like the sniper rough bump. I like to pull as less rings as possible whenever I can. So for me, I always play the rough bump on this hole in a tournament with a Goliath. Okay. If if, if possible. And in this wind scenario, it's definitely possible. I understand that the ring size on the Goliath is bigger than the sniper, but still for me, maybe it's a mental thing. Uh, if I only have to pull 2.1 rings or 2.2 rings instead of having to pull four and a half, I just feel like I have more room for air to uh, pull with the Goliath over a different club. So that's why I do it. You play it however you like, but uh, the way that I am driving this hole is to get yards 
uh, maximum yards so that I can make sure I'm in Goliath range. I do that by going full top with my quarterback and three bars of side spin to the right. Here you can see I'm setting up my yellow ring at the uh, right hand side of the rough there. Uh, the only thing that I would do differently on this shot, okay, is I would probably add a smidge of right curl. So baby right curl. Now, because you're gonna see that with a perfect ball, I do come close to putting it in the rough on the left hand side. Now I will say that both of my drives were safe, okay? On both of my accounts, they both came in just like this. But I would say if you hit an accidental great left, you're probably going to be in the rough. That's not going to kill you. You're still going to birdie the hole, but obviously it's going to take this type of shot away. So here with my Goliath, you're going to see that I'm going to go with about three bars of topspin. I'm putting my yellow ring or, or my green ring right here at the rough line. It's very hard to see. It looks like my green ring is up there at the rough line. And you can see here, ball guideline going to the hole and just barely through the back of the pin aiming at dead center, all right? Uh, I hit this in practice. So the minus 14 that I showed you the scorecard includes a birdie on this hole as well, because what do you know that when it when I went to play this hole for real, I hit a great shot and of course the ball didn't go in, but you see here pretty center of the cup went in for the eagle and you know that was a nice shot there. Again, that's one that we play uphill at minus elevation. So make sure you look at that graphic. That'll take us to hole number six. Hole number six, make sure you bring um, you know, your extra mile. Uh, you can play an APOC, you can do whatever you want. For me, I have an APOC six. Uh, that seems to irritate some people when it comes to pro. Uh, you could play this shot with your extra mile. You could play it with probably as little as an APOC three, to be honest with you. Um, but all we're gonna do here is we're gonna go six bars of top spin three bars of side spin to the left. You're gonna notice I put half my red ring in the rough, half my red ring on the fairway. And then uh, I'm gonna pull here. And then you're gonna take note of the overpower and the amount of curl that we're using on this drive. Both of my opponents picked up birdies on this hole. So this is one to where you pick up the eagle, you might be getting yourself ahead of the field. Notice here that the right edge of my ball is touching the left edge of the blue target. That's the curl that I'm using. Hit a perfect ball. And you're gonna see here, we hit the fairway and we come really nicely up the second fairway and we get a nice rollout with that top spin. Again, you can do that APOC, uh, would be better because you have more accuracy or you could do it with an extra miles, whatever you wanna do. This one we play uphill as well. There's a lot of uphill shots in this game. You know, it's always the rule of thumb to play this whole minus 20% uphill. Now, the thing about it is it's not like I'm really trying to uh, dial in an albatross here because uh, when we go to pull our rings, we're going to be pulling into overpower. You're going to notice here that I'm aiming kind of at the cup after the spins are set. This one, I do pull into overpower. So, of course, I'm going to have to use a little bit of overpower. But it's just a little bit too much side spin to the left. You see here, I didn't use a ton of overpower. I just overpowered till the bottom of my ball was touching the top part of that blue target. And here we miss it by a couple of green squares to the left. So the speed is actually really good. Uh, if you wanted to pick up the albatross, you could, of course, take a look at my shot, reduce the side spin down to maybe two bars. And heck, who knows? You might put one in the hole. It'd be awesome. Hole number seven, I really messed this one up. I don't know what my problem was. Um, I spent a couple practice tokens and I just wasn't getting it there. So I wanted to save my practice tokens for the next rounds because if you saw, I only had one left, so I got to buy some more. Here, I'm setting up at the plus three yard mark with my quarterback. I apply my spins first, one bar of side spin to the right, three bars of backspin. Plus three yard mark for me, or maybe plus two, it's somewhere in that zone. There we go. Plus three. Here, I make my pull. And what we're doing in this wind angle is we're just setting up the rough bump for shot number two to try to pick up an albatross. It normally plays pretty consistently, so I'm a little disappointed here that I was this far off on my second shot. I, f I felt overall I played really well in pro today outside of this hole. So here we're going to be playing the rough bump. We're going to play a 30% mid you see my opponent down there is almost in the water. They tried to just go with a full blast shot, and it almost cost them. But here you're going to see two bars of side spin to the right, a little bit of top spin. 
you know, I've got a healthy portion of the ball guideline through the back of the hole too. And ultimately, it just wasn't enough. I mean, I need to apply even more top spin. I think the two bars of side spin is pretty good from here. But, you know, we could also try to play more center of the rough too and set our spins from there. So it's just qualifying round. If this would have been a further round, obviously, if it had been the final round and I wouldn't have settled for a shot like this, I'd have kept working on it. But, you know, there's enough content in this video, right? to easily get you qualified to the next round, which is the which is the ultimate goal here, and try to reserve my kingmakers and practice tokens. Okay, here is another Ben Kennedy shot that was shared with me. So great job, Ben, on the par threes today. Uh, for me, this one, again, here is in practice, which you're going to see. You can use a kingmaker, and what we're going to do is go two and a half top, half of our aside spin to the right. Now, the thing that I will tell you is that during practice, just like this, uh, I've got my ball guideline essentially right here. You can see it. The ball guideline is not in the hole. It's touching the left part of the cup, so that the outside edge of the cup. And 4.8 mile per hour wind. Now, that's pretty low, okay? I mean, that's almost as low as you can get with the Kingmaker in Pro. But you're going to see here that um, essentially my ball goes almost identical to where I was aiming, you see what I mean? So I tried it again, and if you've had success, uh, oops, if you've had success in pro, then you should have some king slayers laying around. Now, obviously, the difference between a king slayer and a king maker is just the wind. That's it. Same power. Um, well, actually, I'm sorry. It's it has more side spin as well, but we're not going to be utilizing the extra side spin at all. All we're doing is really utilizing the wind resistance. Now, here's the funny thing. Okay, look at this. I'm only at 4.4 miles an hour. Um, so it's not like it was much of a difference. So what I tried doing this time is I tried to set my spins into the hole. Okay, just like you're going to see right here. So notice here I'm doing about the same amount of top. But what I'm really trying to do is get my ball guideline in the cup this time instead of outside of the cup. And you'll see here, I do have it inside the cup. It's still aiming to the left-hand side. You know, I think the point of why we're doing that is because the wind is pushing to the right and we're using side spin to the right. And you'll see here with the perfect ball, I do make it this time. But I make it exactly where I was aiming, okay? So I think we need to aim more center of pin on this hole. Unless you get hit with super high wind, like maybe high fives or high sixes, uh, I think anything in the in the fours and low fives needs to be aimed center of the cup there to get that one to drop middle of the cup. But at least you have a hole in one to take a look at. That'll bring us on here to hole number eight. Here we're going to be going, or is this hole number nine? This is, I think this is it. This is the last hole. I'm, I'm tripping. Okay. Now, on this drive, you can play, again, with whatever club you want. The, the preferred clubs are going to be high-level extra miles, high-level uh, Thor's hammer, or you can use your big topper. We want to put as much top spin on the ball as possible, combined with a little bit of right side spin. And then you're going to notice on this hole, the ball can carry in the air. For some reason, I don't know why, it just happens. So I always leave a little bit of room in Tailwind. You're going to notice here that I put some of my orange ring in the rough, and but most of it on the fairway just like that. You don't want to accidentally overpower this shot either because, again, if you overpower it, uh, you could that tailwind could carry you and you would hit the rough instead of the fairway. We want to hit the fairway and then bounce up just like that. Here with that top spin, of course, we're just looking at the rollout. That's all that we need. Ball comes in really nicely onto the fairway. And then it's going to set up shot number two. And then shot number two, there's two things you can do here, okay? You could go with your Cataclysm or your Big Dog. I mean, we're essentially getting perfect tailwind. So you could look to go over the rough and get yourself onto the green. Um, you know, I'm not sure what you'd have to apply as far as spins go. Definitely two bars of side spin to the right. And I don't know if you'd be using backspin with your overpower or what. Or you can just take your horizon. I always play this hole with the horizon. I think it makes it super easy. I just apply two bars of side spin to the right and then as much top spin as possible. And yes, I do favor the right side spin over the top spin. Uh, there is one little part of this fairway up here at the top 
that seems to be a little bit glitchy. It's almost like when your ball hits it, it just shoots out of a can and you go flying into the rough. So I want you to be careful of that. That's why I do the right spin over the top spin. And here I'm gonna use a little bit of curl to the right, just like this. Be very careful not to over curl this shot because if you apply full curl or too much curl, you're gonna put your ball directly into the rough, okay? That's just me knowing from the mistakes I've made in the past. And that's always one thing I'm always very you know conscious of whenever I play this hole. But here you see we get a really good rollout and we end up getting ourselves onto the green, actually pretty close for an albatross on this hole. Um, I mean, it's not super close, but you see what I mean. But either way, I hope you found the video helpful. Smash that thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, and then I will talk to you all on Thursday for the next rounds. Thanks, everybody.